Hi, um, it's been a minute. <laughs> um, I was in my walk this morning, this afternoon, excuse me, walk this afternoon, yes, uh, my little hike, and wearing the masks has brought up another topic for me, which is about not wearing masks, but not the way you think. So let me explain. Um, this has been bugging me for a while. In fact, this is an ongoing theme of mine, which is basically going below the surface. And I'm not talking about the physical mask wearing, because that's a different conversation. What I'm speaking to is the mask we wear in life. Because the thing is, for me, what I'm really getting clear in some ways about is this mask wearing we're doing now to protect ourselves, excuse me, to protect others from ourselves when we're out in public. Um, and I do wear a mask when I go in stores and when I'm around people in close proximity because I feel like I, should, I want to do that out of respect. It's kind of like a namaste type thing or, on, or namaste, as somebody said. What I'm speaking, though, is about the reminder that when putting a mask on or, taking, or take, putting a mask on and taking it off is actually a reminder about where we tend to wear masks in our private life or our personal life or our public life. So way before the virus hit us, Many of us have had have had had a very deep practice in wearing masks in interaction with other people, in relationships, in business, and other places too. We put on a, sh a shield, a mask, to present ourselves as something we may be not, as we're not. Maybe we're playing less than we are, playing more than we are, avoiding being seen, all those sort of things. So it's the physical experience of watching people walk around in masks is hitting me very deeply in the sense of like, yes, people are not revealing themselves. We're tending to put on a pretense, a mask that is an avoidance of being seen. So I'm using, I know I'm playing this intentionally this way, but I'm using the idea of the mask wearing for health as a reminder that we can stop wearing masks when it comes to connection, a metaphorical mask that is. Because you may know some people yourself and you may not be doing yourself, of course, this is people you know, who have basically put on such a facade of who they are not, they don't really know who they are anymore. But the funny thing is, you probably can see through their illusion anyway. In fact, you are probably quite good at noticing when somebody's wearing a mask and when they're not in interaction, in social circumstances, in, even on Zoom calls, because that's what we're doing a lot of right now. But the thing is, it's like, I'm inviting you to look in your own, in your own reflection in the mirror and seeing where you may be wearing a mask as a facade, as a protection, as a defense, as an avoidance in your relationships. And again, not just romantic relationships, but all relationships. This is something um, a friend of mine had been putting together at some talks. <clears throat> We're going to do a thing about cracking the code of codependency, or cracking the codependency code that's going to be coming up soon. And we talked about some of the things we do about it, how we, how we don't um, own our space and step up fully. And I believe in some of our mask-wearing activities. Now, that, again, I'm not talking about wearing the ones you put over your ears and around your face. I'm speaking about those masks we put on as shields, as shells, as protections, are ways of keeping ourselves away from things. And I think right now what we're going through with the way the world is changing and growing and the walls that are coming down and the challenges we're facing and the againstness is happening a lot, that's an extreme or an exacerbation of mask wearing. Because if we really got down to it, and we took all our masks off, so to speak, all our facades, all our appearances, <coughs> excuse me, all our disguises, and started seeing each other as we really are, as caring, loving human beings. A lot of what's going on right now would dissolve. All the Karens at the stores throwing fits and the people carrying guns because they worry about being affected, all of that is, for me, is, is an exacerbation of that, it's an extreme... fear-based reaction and I'm speaking about how we can start taking down those walls and connecting again you know what's going on with Black Lives Matter is a big part of this as well is because there's so much vitriol that's been accumulated for over many generations because people aren't listening to each other people aren't connecting to each other people aren't hearing each other and frankly it's distressing it's actually kind of sickening the fact that people are still wearing these disguises to avoid being seen and putting on, putting on a bravado or a pretense, a wall that hides them from each other. These are the masks I'm talking about. I know the title's misleading. It may be a bit of a clickbait on the title. But this is the thing I want to say. is like, please, look at your own life. Where are you wearing those metaphorical masks that separate you from people you're around? 
Maybe there's somebody you don't trust or don't like. And you put on a mask to avoid them. You put on a shell of being nice. Well, your expression is fixed and you, don't av you avoid any connection or communication or vulnerability. I'm feeling this need to speak about this. It's been brewing for a while, and so I'm doing this. This has been a while since I've done a Facebook Live, I'm realizing I haven't done it for a few weeks. But I wanted to speak about this because in our own lives right now, and yes, way after this virus experience is complete, which I trust it will be at some point, will you still continue to put masks on when you're around other people? Are you willing to take the risk to be big enough to be vulnerable, to be seen, as you really are? with clear, open expression. It's time that we start doing that in our lives now because watching the, the distress that's been happening, the frustration that's been happening, the, the, the battling that's going on, the conflict between peoples, that if they sat down and talked about it, probably would evaporate. But they're wearing the mask in the case. And yes, there are extremes of that with the government, with the police, with the protesters. There's a lot of mask, mask wearing to pretend to be something that may not necessarily be true because they're not listening because people aren't listening to each other so i'm i'm offering here a encouragement reminder suggestion that this could be a time to start shifting that to start communicating with people who maybe you don't feel comfortable with from a much more maskless experience an open vulnerable and true expression of who you are my work has been shifting as you may have noticed if you've been watching my facebook lives over the last few months and I'm still navigating where that's going to be because I realize that more and more, the deeper I go and the more and more clear I get with my work, it's a lot of helping people find their way back to themselves. Because we've lost touch, I believe, with a lot of who we are. We've become so aligned to views, politics, judgments about other people that we're keeping ourselves separate from each other because that person doesn't believe what I believe. So I'm going to put up a wall and put a mask on so that they don't see me or I don't see them or I ignore them or we can hold this this pretense, this assumption. And frankly, that's not the path we need to take. My belief firmly is the way we get through this is together. The way we get through this is understanding the differences. The way we get through this is to communicate. Not yelling, not, not posting vitriolic stuff on each other's social media posts, but communication. Leading into, leaning into, opening up to, speaking, sharing, understanding, listening, and receiving each other. That's when the masks have come off. That's when the walls come down. That's when the avoidance disappears. So my encouragement to you, my question to you, my invitation to you is, are you up for that? Are you willing to take off your own mask and see yourself clearly in the mirror? <clears throat> Excuse me. And also beyond that, are you willing to look at yourself and then look at other people through that same lens of openness? Are you willing to be open-hearted in your communication with people who don't believe the same thing you do? Are you willing to be vulnerable? Are you willing to be honest? And are you willing to be authentic? That's my encouragement to you. That's what I'm doing more in my life the best I can. And every day is a different day. Opportunities keep showing up. So I do my best to just be open, to be vulnerable. And yes, it is challenging. <clears throat> excuse me, when I'm out in the world and i got a baseball cap on, sunglasses and a mask on, it's hard to be vulnerable, open and trusting. So they do my best to, to send that, that energy to other people because it's, you know, it's the only way to do it. So my invitation for you is to join me in this. My invitation, my encouragement to you is to be bolder than maybe you've been, to be more connected than you've been, to be more willing to trust somebody you've never trusted before, to be willing to connect to, to listen to, and to use both your ears, not just hold on a mask, but to listen to them. I do invite your, your, your thoughts on this, and please in the comments below, feel free to answer. And if you want to get support, I'm, I'm, my work is shifting, but I'm still here to hope my heart to support you in being more authentic yourself. So if you have any questions, you can message me again. Feel free to put some comments below. But I'm inviting you to take down the mask you wear that disguises you and hides you from other people. Still stay safe in the world. Still make sure you do abide by the rules when you go into stores and everything else. That's what I do. But I'm speaking better about how do you take down those walls inside so you can connect with other people.
That's my invitation. Take it or leave it. <laughs> um, that, I think, is going to be about it. I just want to put a quick talk out there to give you some information, to give you some insight. If you want some help, reach out to me. If you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below. If you haven't seen my talks before, I haven't done them for a while, but I have over a 1,000, yes, over a 1,000 Facebook Lives stored on my YouTube channel. Um, if you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can check out all my stuff there. Um, if you want to find out more about me, message me. I'll tell you about, about what I do. I thank you for watching as always. Um, if you're watching as always, <laughs> I appreciate you being with me. And uh, back again soon. I've got more topics brewing, but I haven't got anything that's live right now because I've just done a whole series of talks with a friend of mine, as I mentioned, on cracking the codependency code. Those will be launched soon, so stay tuned for that. We went deep on some pretty um, revealing topics on that stuff. So I thank you for watching. Any questions, message me. Again, I've said that 17 times. I think I should, start, I should shut up now. I appreciate being with me and uh, notice how when you take the mask off, maybe you didn't take off the other mask. That's what I'm asking you. With that, thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. And as always, please take care of yourself, especially now. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.